Your life is going to be so much better when you understand how your nervous system works. It is so much easier to be calm and confident and successful and just generally happy when you actually know how to work with your nervous system rather than working against it. I think out of everything that I've ever learned related to mental health, this has had the most profoundly positive impact on me and I am so excited to share it with you guys. I'm Gabby, I'm a licensed trauma and attachment therapist, but this is not therapy and I am not your therapist. Unless I am, in which case you already know this, you don't need to watch this video. I am just sharing some ideas that have helped me and have helped a lot of the men that I've worked with. Nothing that I say is therapeutic advice or a substitute for professional help. We're gonna start off with some basic anatomy and we're gonna get very simplified here. This is not gonna be a perfect biology lesson. That's not the point. I just want you to understand the mechanics of how this system works so that you can work with it. This is your nervous system. One of its main jobs is to constantly be scanning for danger and to respond to it automatically. The nervous system includes this little area that's deep in your brain. It's the structure that is sometimes called the reptile brain, and it's the oldest part of our brain, evolutionarily speaking. And it has one job, which is to keep you alive. At the center of that system is your amygdala, and this is like your brain's threat detector. We wanna think of this like a smoke alarm. A smoke alarm is gonna go off the second that it senses smoke. It doesn't stop to wait to see if somebody's burning toast or if there's an actual fire, it just goes off. And that's the same thing that the amygdala does. So if the amygdala senses danger, whether it's real or perceived, it's gonna send out that alarm. So after our amygdala detects that there's danger, it communicates that information to our body through the vagus nerve, which is our main communication channel. The vagus nerve is so cool. It runs from the brainstem all the way down through our chest into our abdomen. Kind of like just our general thorax area is how I think of it. And it communicates to our body about whether or not we're safe. This is a good way to see nervous systems in action. So what just happened there is he obviously in his conscious brain understood that he was safe. He's like in the living room, his mom's reading him a book. But what happened is that noise was so loud and unexpected that it bypassed his conscious brain and his amygdala detected that as a threat and mobilized his body. We can see him shaking as well as screaming. And that is just that automatic response. There was an actual danger there. So like, in this metaphor, it was like toast was being burned. But that doesn't matter. It's not only gonna go off when there's an actual threat, it's also gonna go off when there's a perception of threat because it makes way more sense for it to overreact and keep you alive than for it to underreact and put you in imminent danger. According to polyvagal theory, there are really three nervous system states that we wanna be aware of. The first is what we call the ventral vagal state. This is where you are when life just feels really good and there's no threat, there's no chaos, you've eaten, you've slept, if you're around people, there are people that you really feel comfortable with and trust, your nervous system is totally calm. I just call this being in the green for shorthand, I think it's easier. Um, some people call this the rest and digest state. The way that our body functions changes depending on which nervous system state that we're in. So when we're in the green, um, pause if you want to read these. Your digestion is working really well, you're breathing deeply, your heart rate is regulated, and most importantly, your prefrontal cortex is fully online. That is the part of your brain that is responsible for clear, logical thinking, problem solving, empathy, connection, being present and in the moment. Our body functions really well when we're in this state. We are focused on living, not surviving. But the second that your brain senses danger, whether it's real or just perceived, it flips out of that regulated green state and into a survival state. Instead of letting your prefrontal cortex stay in charge, which once again is the part that helps you think clearly and connect with others and stay calm, it just hands the wheel over to the amygdala. The amygdala does not care about being reasonable or relational. It cares about not dying. So when that happens, your body immediately starts assessing that situation to say, is this something that I can survive or am I probably going to die? And if your body thinks that you might survive, it flips into what we call the sympathetic state, also known as fight or flight. We're gonna call this being in the yellow. When we're in the yellow, our amygdala is saying, okay, I think I can get out of this. There's still time, there's still energy. I can run, I can fight, I can do something. And that's why your system gets so revved up. Your nervous system is giving you everything that it's got to help you escape the threat. 
you can see how our body function changes. Our heart rate increases, so does our blood pressure. Our fuel, like glucose, becomes more available. We have adrenaline just flooding our system. And at the same time, our digestion is gonna slow way down, and so is our immune response. Because who cares about digestion or fighting off a cold when we are being chased by a wild animal? And you can also see that your ability to connect with others decreases because obviously this is no time to make friends. When that alarm goes off, your body kicks into action. Your blood moves from your brain into your muscles, your breath gets more shallow, your vision narrows, your system prepares to fight or to run. You are no longer thinking, you are reacting. Polyvagal calls this a state of high activation, high tension, and high energy. And this is what's super interesting, because if we look at that chart right here, we can see that this is labeled I can, which implies obviously like I can survive this. Once again, if my body thinks I'm gonna live, it's gonna put me into fight or flight. But if the amygdala senses the threat and says, I can't win, I cannot get away, I am trapped, my body is instead going to shift into shutdown. And my system goes, okay, I think that what you need to do here is play dead, hold still, don't move, don't feel, just survive. That is the freeze or the dorsal vagal state. We're just gonna call that being in the red, but it's the freeze or the fawn response. It's what happens when your body does not believe that action is possible anymore. Like you're just a sitting duck. When you're in the red, all of your body systems slow way down your temperature drops, your digestion stops, your heart rate slows, and your immune system goes offline. Your energy just kind of disappears. You might go numb or feel just totally disconnected or emotionally flat. People usually describe this state as just feeling absolutely nothing, which makes a lot of sense because if you are about to be killed, it, your body is trying to protect you from the pain of that experience. That's ultimately what being in this state is. This is one of my favorite ways to show people what the freeze response looks like. So here we have this Impala and its brain has obviously made the decision that's like, okay, we're not gonna be able to run away from this. We're not gonna be able to fight. We're gonna go into the red. We're gonna go into the shutdown. And then for some reason, this cheetah leaves and its brain is like, okay, the threat has passed. So look at its belly. You can see its breathing deepening. And if you'll remember, shallow breathing is a staple of being both in the red and in the yellow. So to get out of it, that's how our body starts to communicate to the rest of us that it's okay. And then we can see that this guy is just like shaking it out, like it's a nervous system. This is how it's resetting itself. It shakes itself out of the freeze. And then eventually when he's all done shaking, he's gonna be able to stand up and run away like nothing has happened. We don't have that as humans. We don't have like an automatic thing that unsticks us. So if we're stuck and we don't realize it, we can stay stuck. So without even realizing it, you could spend literally years of your life living with a completely dysregulated nervous system and you don't know what's happening. So you're just like, oh no, I'm just like a really anxious person. Or I'm just a really angry person. And you don't realize that what's happening is your nervous system got stuck. I sometimes see people in therapy and I'm like, you've been living in either the yellow or the red for like years at a time and you don't realize it because you're just like, oh, I just like have a temper or you're just like, oh, I'm an anxious person because at some point what happened is that your nervous system felt threatened and it got stuck in that state. Maybe you had a tragic life event or you had a really stressful job or you grew up in a house that was chaotic. So what happened is your nervous system was activated for a really long time to try and protect you from that threat and it got stuck. So the problem is actually just that you need to learn how to take care of your nervous system and a lot of these things will go away. This is time for a little interlude. I think that my favorite part of being alive is helping people understand themselves because for so much of my life, I really did not understand myself and I didn't understand my nervous system. And that resulted in me being really reactive and being often depressed and anxious. And a lot of the time it felt like I was trapped inside of my negative feelings. So the whole point of this series is to help you start building a map of your nervous system so that you can know how it works really well so that you can increase your understanding of yourself. This is the pattern that I've noticed just in my work and in my life. It's something that I've literally taped to my wall on my bedroom and I brought it here to show you. Um, I think in our culture, we talk a lot about self-acceptance and self-love and none of that actually means anything unless you understand yourself. 
if you want to develop a good relationship with yourself, I think that this is the pattern that we need to follow. We need to start with an awareness and then gain an understanding, move to acceptance, appreciation, and then love. This right now is we're working on understanding. I'm gonna teach you everything that you need to know in order to become best friends with your nervous system. And I'm giving you the full spiel here because if this is clicking, I really would love for you to take this seriously because understanding how my nervous system works has given me such a higher quality of life. It's improved my relationships and my self-talk and my motivation and my ability to focus on what matters. There's no chance in hell that I'd be able to create a YouTube channel if I didn't understand these principles. I'm standing here in front of my wall that I'm building to connect the concepts and ideas related to the state of men and boys as I review the literature. I believe that these issues need to be understood through the lens of the nervous system and they need to be trauma and attachment informed because that is the only way that we can actually understand the humanity of a group of people outside of what their identity is. I think that in our culture, everyone's nervous system right now is incredibly dysregulated because we, first of all, don't understand our nervous systems, which means that we don't understand how the media that we consume is impacting our nervous systems. Our technology has advanced far more quickly than our nervous systems can. I think that the next step of human evolution is for us to start understanding how our nervous systems work because our nervous system was designed to handle immediate physical threats. It has no idea what to do with threats that it sees on social media or what to do about a Netflix show about a fictional boy who kills someone. I really believe that the more people who understand these concepts, the more we can move forward to reintegrating boys and men into our society rather than continuing to push them out because we've been taught to see them as the source of our oppression. I completely recognize that whatever's happening with boys and men right now is occurring at a systems level. But at the same time, I don't think we can only approach things from a systemic level intervention. I think we also need to approach things from an individual level. And I think that the most powerful thing that the individual can do is learn how to regulate their nervous system. Because regulation is contagious. When you're around somebody who's regulated, it's a lot easier to stay regulated. So. When you do this work for yourself, it's going to positively impact everyone around you. So I am very committed in helping you understand your nervous system and helping you learn how to regulate it and giving you all of that information that you need. Today, we just kind of went over basics, but now that you have this understanding, we're gonna be able to apply this to your own life and it's gonna be really awesome. I'm super excited. I really appreciate you watching and I hope that my sound wasn't messed up this time like it was last time and I'll talk to you in the next video.